JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab created or earth created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict free stones. Then you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real time diamond consultations available where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. Welcome to the Power Cat Podcast, gopowercat.com's Kansas State Athletics Show. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, from the GPC studios, here's your host, Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the Power Cat Questions podcast. We do this every week, year-round, unless we take a week off. I guess I just lied to you. I'm Tim Fitzgerald, the liar. Zach Carlson, Cole Carmody, Ryan Gilbert, the whole crew's here. I got a dog that's on medication. He's stoned out of his mind, and it's going to be fantastic. It's just going to be the best podcast we've done, well... All week. We're sponsored by The Fridge. Make sure you stop into The Fridge whenever you are in Manhattan. They always have great specials going on. Make sure you download The Fridge app so you know everything that's on sale at The Fridge. You can scout out the good deals and the prices before you ever set foot in the store. You can be like a shopping ninja. By using The Fridge app, you know where to strike. You need to go left, right to the vodka, get that Tito's handle that's on sale, and it's always got good prices on Tito's. Yep. Make sure you buy all your Tito's dog-friendly vodka. That's right. Dog-friendly vodka at the fridge. So the story behind that is uh, Tito's is located outside of Austin in a rural area. And people were dumping dogs out there. And so they started to bring them in. And they set up an actual shelter for rescues. And then they took the next step and all Tito's employees can bring their dogs to work. So it's a dog friendly oh. environment. And now they're the dog friendly vodka. I missed the first half of uh, your explanation of that. So I was like confused why you're saying dog friendly. And then I got it. Yeah. And I, I got the whole, the story. And and then they turn around and give $20 million to Texas athletics. But anyhow, the vodka is wonderful and you can get it at the fridge. That was a sad ending to a good story. How's our questions this week, guys? Are we, are we going to have some ass-kicking questions? Pretty good. We've got so many new people at the website. It's so much fun. We, we've got all these new voices. We're growing like crazy. Oh, my gosh. And, and they're asking good questions. We had to restrict everyone to one question because Zach, Zach's head exploded a few Someone weeks ago. Someone will be shamed on this podcast. Yep. Someone violated the rules. His name they? is Riley Gates. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, but we can shame him. I, I would like to apologize to Riley for picking on him last week during the podcast. I know you did nothing, nothing to deserve that. You're a fine young man. Nothing else? Oh, I'm supposed to keep talking. That's that's all. That's and there's I'm... a ball hitting to left field, whatever that <laughs> setting is. <laughs> Here we go. Your questions from Wallbass Station. One of these guys is going to ask them because I, once again, forgot to ask in advance who's got what half. So someone talk. I got this. Come First question comes from Kevin316. Uh, Zach believes they are new to the podcast, new to the site. He is not for I sure. I didn't say that. I just He had some posts. He had some months, but I don't remember ever seeing him on the podcast. Oh, uh, I've never seen him. And for all our young newcomers to the website, happy 420. Go ahead. Thank you for that. Um, Kevin wants to know, what are realistic expectations for the two kids Coach Tang picked up this week? They don't have stellar stats from last season. Let me give you a little historical background here. First of all, they're both four-star guys. They're both highly regarded coming out of high school. Um, both have really good upsides. They – is dude <laughs> drinking? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's what we're hearing. Yeah. Um, they both have really high upsides. But I remember many years ago when a guy named Curtis Kelly transferred to K-State from UConn, averaging over two seasons, mind you, two points a game. And he came to K-State and was, you know, he's cherished as a K-Stater. So sometimes a new beginning can really change your whole outlook, change who you are. But these are foundation-type guys. And I don't mean that as depth, but this is the type of athlete that they want to bring in. And both of them are going to be sophomores. So they're going to be in the program for probably three years unless they blow up and leave early. Or who knows now with Transfer Portal. But um, 
I like them both. I don't have huge expectations for them, but I also recognize they have a an unrecognized or unrealized upside that I'm excited about to see what happens. Now, they'll go out and get some guys that can put up points immediately. They're going to find those guys. But bottom line, with everything they're doing in recruiting, they're not taking a stopgap class. I sense that at Missouri. Uh, it's and, and I'm not criticizing Coach Gates' approach over there at Missouri, but he's just grabbing guys left and right. And maybe he has a master plan of how all these pieces will fit together. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's just getting the best players he can find and we will figure out how they work together. Over at K-State, Jerome Tang is looking for guys that fit what he wants. So maybe Missouri will have immediate success that K-State doesn't have next season, but I think Tang's building it from the ground up from the very start. He's not going to try to bring in a bunch of guys, get by for next year, and then recruit guys you want. He knows what he wants. He knows the type of players he wants. He knows the the makeup, both mentally and physically, the players he wants. And he's going to go get those guys and try to work this from a long-term approach because he, from everything I'm told, he has no plans of leaving K-State. This is not a stop by, I'm going to go to a bigger job after this. This is his last coaching stop in his mind. So he wants to do it right from the very beginning. And I'm encouraged by these two guys, even though combined, they averaged about three points a game last year, which I'm, which replaces Davion Bradford's stats. I'm not sure either one of these guys is going to start. The the big guy might. He him maybe Colbert might. So just for the if you're if you're new um, and you haven't been following along, a um, how's the rock that you're living under? Um, but B, it's Jarrell Colbert and Cam Carter. Right. Cam Carter from Mississippi State, Jarrell Colbert from LSU. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure either one will start. I know that especially it's going to be hard for Carter just because they have been in on a lot of guards. Yeah. And so that might be hard for him to break the starting lineup. Colbert's got a chance. I, I think that he was the more highly recruited. If he can be a, the shot blocker, rebounder. And let other guys score. That that's going to work. Yeah. But I don't think either one of these guys have very high expectations. I don't think this is. I don't. I don't think you should have super high expectations for either one of these two guys. The way I see it is, this is the appetizer for what Coach Tang hopes is about to be the main course. Mm-hmm. Right. This is two guys. They still have what six or seven scholarships left. Seven. Yeah. There's a lot of movement still to be had. I don't think either one of these guys are going to average more than. Hold on, we did it again. It's eight, right? They've only got five guys. Did I do it again? We did it again. Okay, just just forget my counting. Yeah, but right there at five with Manning, they're at five. Correct. I'm not. I'm not out of my mind here. They got two transfers, two returners, and Manning. So that's five. They're thirteen. Math is hard. Okay, eight. They got eight to go. So, I don't think any either one of these guys is going to average more than what eight points a game. Is that fair? Oh yeah. So I mean, I, 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 I it's optimistic one of these guys next season is averaging eight points game they didn't get the type of kids they wanted out of the portal one of these guys might be you know the replace the production luke kazuki i don't I, luke oh kazuki, boy yeah. like just like you know you got to replace you have to find ways not every guy is going to play i guess is what i'm saying and you know i'm not saying cam carter won't play i'm not saying colbert won't play but if neither one of them are starters that's probably a good thing for jerome tang yeah if you're stashing four stars on your bench that's yeah. a, that's a pretty good thing. <laughs> good problem to have. Mm-hmm. I I just find it interesting that K State's now taken two guys from Power Five programs that were four star recruits that weren't playing very much. Meanwhile, they put into the portal some guys that played significant minutes, and I th- truly think that Nigel Pack will be the only Power Five signing out of mm-hmm. the group. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone else sneaks in there, but I don't see how. But the only guys right now to have a destination, Sari Lewis to Rice and, and Carlton Lingard apparently to UTSA, which I totally missed. I didn't mm-hmm. even see that happen. But, yeah, everyone else is still looking. I think Miguel's final three schools, only one is Power 5, South Carolina, I believe. Hmm. Ironic. I, I thought he'd be good playing for Frank Martin, and he's going to the wrong place. <laughs> That's a great comparison with Kurt Kelly, though. 
I mean, on top of the fact that he transferred and, and found more success after Zach's stomach is oh growling God, at us, it's unbelievable. It growls all the it's like angry. it's always always it, it here. Wants lucha. I mean, it can't. Yeah, no, uh, no, uh, it's going to make more of those sounds <laughs> if I eat lucha. <laughs> <laughs> but Kurt Kelly is going to be, for all we know, a GA again next year, mm, and yes. so to have him as a mentor down low. I mean, say what you want about Kelly, but his fundamentals were just tremendous. Unbelievable. And that didn't go away. We watched practice last fall. Those don't go away. It's like riding a bike. So that's only a good thing. And Cole, I agree. I don't think either one of these guys will start. But it's not like Tang is holding on for dear life. And if he doesn't make the NCAA tournament, he's getting fired. He's got a long time here. He knows that. And this is just the foundation of the rebuild or the, the elevation, whatever he calls it. Right? I, I'm telling you, folks, there's so much talent left in the portal. And every day between now and the end of the month when they – Players have to be in the portal by May 1. Is it as of May 1 or before May 1, whatever, to be eligible next year at a new school? So uh, there's going to be more talent, and there's more talent dropping in all the time. So I, I like that he's taking this patient approach. You know, he's they offer everyone that they think they want, and then they evaluate them, and they pull back on some guys. I think we've seen that. They've, they've decided we can do better than this. We can. This doesn't quite fit what we're looking for. Now, it will be interesting if they get into middle May and they're still struggling for four spots, how they address that. But I'm also prepared for them to go into the season maybe with 11 scholarship players and go find some walk-ons and save some scholarships for next year. I mean, I get the feeling that Jerome Tang rather have an empty scholarship than introduce a one-and-done player to his locker room that may disrupt things. I think he's that focused in on the word he refuses to use, culture, because it's kind of turned into a cliche um, because all every coach talks about, coaches want to talk about culture, but only the really good ones build a culture. That's that's the biggest def- line of definition that decides who's successful and who's not. Who can build a locker room culture? Who can build a culture within their program that players strive to uphold? The best at it in the game, I really believe this, is Bill Self. K-Staters don't want to hear that. But he can have a culture that certain guys carry through the years, and then he can introduce a Remy Martin. And it took him most of the season, not only to get him healthy. KU fans will just tell you it's about Remy getting healthy. It wasn't. He had to buy in. He had to understand that he wasn't the superstar at Kansas. He was at Arizona State. Bill Self won that battle. There was only two outcomes of that battle. He was either going to bend to Bill Self's will and become the player that helped them win the national championship, or he was going to get kicked off the team. That's what a good coach does when he's trying to build culture. And I I think that'll be the biggest thing that Jerome Tang takes away from Baylor. Once they zeroed in on their type of athlete and their type of culture and locker room they wanted, the type of individual they wanted, it clicked. It wasn't just about getting better players. It was about being a better place. And he knows what it takes now. Cole, you'll you'll appreciate this. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Mm -hmm. And Dorian Finister, who's on K-State's radar announcing his decision here in a couple weeks, I don't even believe he has any stars on 24-7. But Mm -hmm. if he wants to work hard and put in that effort, that's a million times better in this coaching staff's eyes than a player who has X amount of stars and just has raw talent. Agreed. Next question comes from Bring On The Mob. From your time covering the Cats, is there a coaching change that has revitalized and captured the fan base as quickly and completely as the Tang Gang has? Huggins. I mean, and it was different. The times are so different. We're talking 15 years ago, 16, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. I don't know. You're old. I know. It's just so long. It, it's crazy to think that it was that long ago because it doesn't feel that long ago. Um, because it, the social media wasn't as prominent, wasn't as big a deal. It's hardly a big deal. And and so you didn't have all this type of recruiting that we see now, the visibility of it all and um, the number of how active these guys are on social media. That was a non-factor. But Huggins immediately overnight changed the expectations of K-State with one phrase. Why settle for second when first is available? That was his. That was his catch, and you know what? He never won first in Manhattan, and Frank never won first in Manhattan. But they also never had a losing record in Big Twelve play in, in those five years. So yeah, that was a um, 
a flip of the switch coming off of Asbury and then Wooldridge, you know, the long stretch there of just humble, just K-State basketball fans were just neglected um, and it just didn't work. So, yeah, but no, this kind of visible public outreach. And what I like about it is this isn't talk. I'm, I'm, I'm very sincere when I, I'm telling you this as, as K-Staters. This isn't a bunch of guys just saying what needs to be said to say the right things to, you know, we're bought in. Folks, they're in love with you. It's not that you're in love with them. They see you for what you are as a fan base. You're passionate. And they know with passion also comes expectations. That's something someone else never quite grasped, that expectations not being met lead, leads to people being unhappy. They know they've got pressure to win because they understand already the history of K-State basketball and why it's important to my age set and older and why your guys' younger set deserves really cool basketball. Football games are amazing. Don't get me wrong. But when Bramage Coliseum, even in its whatever you want to say, it's it's subpar nature compared to a Hearn Fieldhouse. When it rocks, it's incredible. They know that. Coach Tang's seen it. He's experienced it. And when I talk to these guys, it is very sincere. They are bought in on Kansas State and Manhattan and don't have intentions, at least the guys I've talked to, of departing anytime soon. They have a job to do, and they don't want to just do it for their career. They want to do it for you, the fans. I've never heard coaches that came into a place totally foreign to them, for the most part, other than Tang visiting for games, and fall in love with it like this. It's it's absolutely incredible. They love Manhattan. They love the fact it's a small town. People, it, we've had this discussion on the message boards. But we were told it was hard to recruit to Manhattan, Kansas. That is the biggest flipping cop out any coach could have. It's too hard to recruit. Any there. sport, too. Yeah. No, you're too soft to recruit. You don't understand how to sell. Good salespeople can turn that to a positive. And I told one of the coaches this. I flat out told him. I said, for every kid who says, I don't want to go to Manhattan, Kansas because it's too small, there's a mom that wants their kid in Manhattan, Kansas where they will be part of a family and have a whole hell of a lot less to get in trouble with. And they're using that. This is moms, dads. This is a great place to send your kid. We got them. This is a family here. Everyone looks out for each other. And it's still a college experience. And it's a college experience. Mm -hmm. I think to answer this question from my perspective, um, I'm going to take this and turn it on its head for the chiefs. Okay. Oh. Because, this reminds me of when Patrick Mahomes took over the NFL and Chiefs fans fully embraced him as the quarterback. After one game when he just so happened to destroy the San Diego Chargers at the time and then Ryan's Pittsburgh Steelers and threw for six touchdown passes in week two, um, Chiefs fans were all in. And he has been a staple in the in the Chiefs community, and he is the face of the franchise and, you know, one of the faces of the NFL right now. So um, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen with Jerome Tang. He's not going to have that immediate success. But, like, that's what that reminds me of as far as, like, a fan base clinging to something and claiming it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really cool. And you're right, Fitz. I, I, I have nothing but – even if they don't have as much success as fans maybe want them to have right away, I still think that support is going to be there because they're doing it the right way. Small correction, Cole. They were not in San Diego. They were in L.A. They were in L.A. Okay. Wow. Unacceptable. My mind is blown. What? The that Zach knew that. No, I looked. At, I double checked it. I was oh. certain that Cole was wrong, <laughs> and I needed to point it out. They played in the soccer stadium. <clears throat> yes, mm -hmm. yes, they played in Carson. Forget. They were yeah. the Carson Chargers. That's right. That's right. Not really, but that they were. Hmm. There you go. The there Home go. Depot Center, whatever it is called now. Next question comes from Get Out More Cat. Who? Let's just say this right now. He asked two questions. Some people don't know how to follow the rules, and have we seen that GIF where it's just the guy going, "Get out." You're fired. That's that is what we need to say to get out more. Cat, that was good. 
Um, I kept him in, though. I could have, but he asked two really good questions, and the only reason I knew he asked two is because I was going to put in the second one. I was like, hang on. He cheated. Should we send him a message right now and ask which one he wants included, though? What if he wants the other one? No, you you get one shot. One question, one question. Uh, so you're only taking okay. the first one? Either? Yes. Yeah. Okay, only stop. the first yep. one. Yep. Do not miss your chance to blow. This yep. opportunity <laughs> comes once in a lifetime. All right, Eminem. Um, he wants to know which football player gets drafted in what round? I'm assuming he's talking Didn't about Did we have K-State. this question I don't like, think a few so. weeks ago? No, maybe. Okay, it's so draft season. There's three guys. I think I think we all agree there's three guys when you talk about the draft. Skyler Thompson, Josh Revis, and Russ East. And I agree with Ryan Wallace. I think Russ is the only one with a shot. People ask, will Skyler get picked? I don't, I don't think so. I just... It depends may- on the quarterback situation for the rest of the draft. I mean, I, I'm not a big Mel Kuyper fan, but he didn't have him in this top 12, my, which means nothing. Uh, but I, I don't know how many quarterbacks get drafted, but there's a drop-off. And someone might take a run at him fifth or sixth round if they need a third quarterback. Um, Josh Revis didn't test well. Now, I'm going to say this. He's going to play in the NFL. He's going to get signed by a team as a free agent. And who cares what he runs on a 40? He's going to just bully some dudes around as a as an interior lineman. And he's going to he's, – he might have to spend some time on a practice squad, but he's going to play. I have no doubt about it. Rush East is ready to go. I, really, I truly believe that. A little undersized, yeah. But if you look at the history of K-Staters of the NFL – it's really safety where they've had a lot of success putting guys in. Now it's offensive line, but historically K-State's produced good safeties. And one of the reasons why is the way K-State played defense under Bill Snyder, and some of it's the same under Chris Kleiman, is those safeties have to play downhill a lot. They have to run support a lot. And in the NFL, that's just huge. So you have to be able to, you know, read the play and understand if you got to be back or front and, you know, come up. And those guys do it. Russ is very physical. He's He's got a good nose for coverage. Um, he's ex- extremely good shape. Um, he runs well. I, I think he's going to be picked before this draft is over. I do. So I'll, say, I'll say sixth round for us. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think you're exactly right on Josh Revis. I don't think he'll get picked, but I will say this. There is a lot of teams in the NFL who could give a crap about testing for offensive linemen. Right. Um, teams, like, teams that typically draft their linemen, like, I think like the Indianapolis Colts. Think about all the linemen that they produce that are studs. I could see a team like that. I could also see a team like the Packers, right? These teams that um, they have veteran, veteran coaches, veteran coaches, mm-hmm. veteran coaches, coaching staff, scouting departments. These more analytically inclined coaches um, that just look at the numbers. I think that's where a guy like Revis will um, kind of fall. But at the same time, there is also the number of hey. Every time he's on the field, good things happen. Yeah. And so I think that's where they are with Revis. You're right about Rush East. I'm actually still kind of so-so on Skylar Thompson. I think there's a better chance he gets drafted than people think just simply because I know how quarterbacks go in the draft. He just I, – I know this will rub some people wrong. He just doesn't have that no. NFL arm strength Mm-mm. that you've got to have. He I mean, doesn't. I, I think he could be a, a long-time backup quarterback – because he'll understand systems, he'll he'll be always prepared. He's a very intelligent guy. I mean, if if he could be one of those guys that just hangs around the league getting paid not to play, that's a good way to spend your life. I know you miss out on a lot of the glory and the but you also when you're fifty can walk. And I sincerely mean that. Some of these well, Tom Brady's almost fifty, he still walks. <laughs> but a lot of these guys are just beaten to death. They just really are. Skyler seems like the kind of guy who would go to a team like the Browns, who they're going to have a veteran backup quarterback. Baker Mayfield's going to be gone. They're going to have a veteran backup quarterback in case things happen with Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they're going to have a guy who's ready to go. And then they're going to have a backup to him who is ready to go. But then that fourth quarterback is going to be that developmental piece. And if they think that, hey, we we need to have somebody who we can get into our system as a young quarterback – that could kind of be a situation where I see Skylar Thompson and well, spending he, time on the practice squad and, and doing that kind of stuff. I think you added one to me, Corbett. I think typically you'll have yeah, three. Yeah, you'll have three. three. I, but um, I can see that. The third guy that handles the clipboard right. and maybe next season or in two seasons is the backup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. But, so. but that would mean he in, ends up in Cleveland, and I don't want that to happen to Skylar. Somebody mocks Unless he likes rock and roll. 
That's, that's where the whole somebody mocked him to Detroit, which I was like, that's even worse. Oh my gosh, I I can't see Skylar Thompson lasting longer than Jake Waters in the NFL. That's the type of career path I see for him. He's going to go to training camp. He's going to get cut, and he's not going to cut it for a practice squad. And you know what? He's going to be a coach one day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Skylar Thompson is the type of guy that's going to go coach football, whether it be high school, college. I could see him coach in the NFL. Who knows where he could coach? But he's the type of person that I could see mm-hmm. is going to have a far longer career as a coach than a player. I agree. And that's I just – I don't think – and I mean no disrespect to Skylar Thompson, but I do not think he has what it takes to even be the practice squad quarterback for one of the 32 NFL teams. Now, physically, he's probably in better situation, unbelievably, than, than Jake was. Jake's shoulder after yes. his, his shoulder injury was never quite the same. Um, and ironically, Skyler's had more severe injuries, but he's come back from those. But man, that wear and tear, eventually your body just stops working. Zach, I, I completely agree that I don't think he has what it takes to play in the NFL either, but no disrespect to Skyler, do you think he's smart enough to realize that he isn't good enough and goes and starts coaching? Yeah, I think Skyler is too. extremely self-aware, and I okay. I think that. But I think it's gonna to- I think it's gonna hurt him when he has to make the decision. You know, that, I mean, it's a dream for anybody, especially to get to this close mm-hmm. to you know being able to smell the NFL. You know, I think that's you know kind of a, a dream come true for a lot of. A lot of people, not very many people have that opportunity. And I think that Skylar Thompson absolutely understands and knows that he's lucky to even be in this conversation. And I think that, you know, he's going to, he's going to give it a go. I don't blame him for that. Yeah, why you not? Know, he's, he's already, he's already 99% of the way there. Not very many people can say that you made it 99% of the way. You know, I don't think he's going to get picked. You know, he's going to have, you know, once the draft is all said and done, he's going to be one of those first guys that signs with a team. He's going to sign an undrafted free agent deal and he'll be attached to a team, you know, who, you know, I I don't know if he's going to make it. But I think that when the time comes, I think he'll be smart and he'll make the decision that's best for him. And I think that eventually he's going to be a coach. Two thoughts. What one, if you're Skyler and you don't, don't see the pathway to being a starting NFL quarterback. You almost hope you bounce around the league a little bit to learn different systems, meet as many people as you can, because that increases your chances of maybe finding that guy that says, Hey, you want to come coach? Um, And with that also um, is the reality that if, if it doesn't work, he will always have a spot at Kansas state as something, Mm -hmm. some role. Chris Kleiman will always have a spot and will help him get into college coaching if that's how it works out. Second, you always have to remember with the NFL, <clears throat> it just takes one. Ryan Gilbert walks into a room of 32 of the hottest women in the world. <laughs> More than likely, all 32 are not going to be into Ryan Gilbert, but maybe one will call her Detroit. <laughs> Thinks Ryan is sexy. The other 31 don't have to agree, <laughs> but it just takes one and you're drafted. You might be the sixth round pick for Detroit, but um, I'll take it. You're there. You're there. It just takes one. There we go. Uh, next question is the greatest question in the history of um, the questions podcast fits. So I hope this, you're is, this. this is a bold statement from Cole Carmody, who's been on the podcast for 13 months. <laughs> uh, it comes from Exhausted Nihilist. Oh, I love the name so much. It's just my favorite name. No, everyone else come up with great names. Exhausted Nihilist is the greatest. If the Jets take a flyer and call the name of a wildcat like Revis, Skylar Thompson, Rush East, or Timmy Horn, will Fitz still boo, or will he wabash all the way up and down the Las Vegas Strip without spilling a drop of his vodka-spiked manly fruitini? God, this dude knows me so well. It's so spot on. <laughs> so everything about that was exactly right. Um, Fruity mantini. First of all, if you don't know, I've I've got a business trip. More details to follow, hopefully, after I return from the business trip about what it is. Uh, so I'll be in Vegas for the draft, and we'll be staying right down from the draft, so down at the Bellagio Fountains. And so I think on Thursday we're going down there. It's a bunch of 24-7 publishers. Uh, 
and I joked on the message board that I just want to be there to boo the Jets <laughs> pick because it's like the greatest tradition of the draft is <laughs> the Jets fans. They could, I mean, they could pick the greatest player ever and they still boo. So I'm confident, exhausted, that they will not be picking a, a Kansas State player in the first round. But if they take a flyer, I will cheer it <laughs> while I laugh because what the hell were you doing taking Timmy Horn in the first round? <laughs> That would be so Jets, though, to do it. Um, but, yeah. But no matter what happens, I promise you, I will not spill any of that valuable vodka vodka in a fruity mix. I won't do it. Got to save the vodka. Are you staying at Caesar's Palace? No, we're not. And here's a little uh, fun fact. That is not actually where Caesar stayed. <clears throat> <clears throat> I've learned that <clears throat> from a movie. Oh, there we go. Was it a documentary? Yeah, I think it was. Okay. It was about to get some guys that got really drunk. And they got a tiger. I could relate to everything in that movie. Even the tiger. Even well, not really Mike Tyson playing the piano. Do you have a friend named Doug? Not not on me, no. You'll meet Doug him there. is Doug is such an un- uncommon name. I would it, it really is. I, I just want to let everyone know that if you invite me to your bachelor party in Vegas, I will not lose you. <laughs> I won't lose you. I might lose myself, but I will know where you're at. Very good. Next question from Euler Cat 2. Does Will Howard keep his red shirt this year? That's a great question. It's an interesting question. No. I just don't think the other no. guys are ready to be the backup. I don't either. Unless one of those other quarterbacks really makes a huge advancement, I just don't see how they'll be able to do it. Unless, unless they keep the big guy healthy. You got to keep Adrian Martinez healthy for nine games. That's all you have to do. I still think I he's going to be involved <laughs> in some packages. Like, I'm, If they want to use him, he's a very good athlete. But I think he's deserving to see the field. Let's so, keep in mind, and this is probably what Oilers after. He does get four games. He sure, can play yeah. four games. So maybe they can. This is the best case scenario for everyone, and I'm just going to pledge this to you. Uh, K State will be so good that it won't need Will Howard at the end of the game. So they'll just put in. They'll put in Gills mm. at the end of the game. So his there are 32 players on the on the field. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, they'll just throw them out there and let them get killed because they're up 55 to nothing on Oklahoma, and they don't they don't need to score any more points against Oklahoma. So that's my best case scenario. And Will Howard can just go in there for four games and play and get his red shirt and come back next year. That simple. As a junior, yeah. It's, is he? What is he? It's his third year. It, it, it's his third year, but he has a COVID year too, so he could be just. I don't know. Are you ready for this hot take? Yeah. If they get the quarterback they want this class, they will not want Will Howard to keep his red shirt. Because that would mean it's a hot take. Two years of sitting on the bench. I know. So I'm not good at math, but I do know that. Uh, last question from the first half comes from I'm going to say this right, Zach. I'm confident. Okay. Kraus House. Oh. Good. Wow. Is There's that, a reason you, you're doing these ones. Is that right? I would never have been that, able to say that. That is how I would have pronounced it. Yeah. I don't know if it's right, mm-hmm. but um, that's how I would have pronounced it. So, first of all, welcome to the podcast. They are new to the site as well. So, new to the podcast. Um, they want to know, they say, I think K-State will have the best defense in the Big 12 this year, barring injuries. Thoughts? Best defense in the Big 12? I don't think so. Oklahoma State's really good. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I don't even... Baylor. <clears throat> I'm not even that familiar with what everyone has. I don't, I just, there's enough questions on the defense not to get to that status for me. I think the defense is going to be good. Don't get me wrong. But linebacker depth is a concern. You're an injury or two away from a big drop off. But barring injury, that is the caveat. You can't. That, that's like, yeah. barring turnovers, K-State could win every game. You know, I, but yeah, they'll be good, really good. I'm saying top four. I would agree with that. And, I think and in the Big four. 12, that says a lot. Yeah. Because uh, unlike ESPN, we know that the Big 12 started playing some pretty good defense in recent years. If you're top four offense and top four defense, you have a great chance to play in the Big 12 championship game. Yeah. That should be your goal, right? Yeah. I mean, that should realistically, that should be your goal. Even if you're number four, you still have a good chance. I, I, I don't think they'll be the best defense. Um, do they have a chance to be the best defense? Sure. But I think 
I think they will be a top four defense. I they really need do. Some pieces in the secondary. What, I think. What were they this year? I honestly couldn't tell you. Probably like five or six. They got to be and maybe top half. Yeah, I think so. That's not that big of a jump. So yeah, I'm. I, I think they have a great shot. I think we'll get it. I think we'll get into transfer portal here in a little bit. But I think they probably need to pick up a couple more. Was that pieces. like a preview of the second half? Ooh, that might have been the preview of the second half of the podcast. Well, that's that sounds the transfer portal. A little bit of little bit of transfer portal. Huh? Any yeah. nil? A little bit of nil. Huh? You want to keep going? You want to keep guessing? Uh, any commissioner stuff? Mm-hmm. A little bit. <laughs> okay, we'll be back on the Power Cat Questions podcast, sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. GoPowerCat.com's Power Cat podcast continues after this short break. Diets and workouts, you've done the work, so why can't you get to your goal weight? That's because up to 70% of your weight is predetermined by your genetics. So while you've been told that it's all about your willpower, you're actually fighting your biology. Don't do it alone. Found's doctor-designed program uses medication as part of a treatment plan that targets your body's unique biological needs so that your body works with you and not against you. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's weight loss program is right for you. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Recently, I asked Mint Mobile's legal team if big wireless companies are allowed to raise prices due to inflation. They said yes. And then when I asked if raising prices technically violates those onerous two-year contracts, they said, what the f*** are you talking about, you insane Hollywood ass!" So to recap, we're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows full terms at mintmobile.com. Welcome back to the Power Cat Podcast. Now, let's return to the GPC Studios. Welcome back to the Power Cat Questions Podcast. I am exhausted from talking in the break. We talked about so much stuff. And if you're a regular listener, Daphne farted. So we had to clear the room for a little while to air it out. We're sponsored by The Fridge. Nothing stinky about The Fridge. Get on in there and buy yourself some fun in a bottle. I never made it in there to buy Pacifico. I feel like a bad customer. Shame. Ah, Shame. 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 Great trivia there, Zach. I shared this with you, right? That uh, the owner from Ted Lasso, the the blonde, the the woman, yeah, I she can... is from Game of Thrones. She is the person chanting "shame" as what's her name is braided naked through the streets. I I wasn't into Game of Thrones like you were, Fitz. Shame, shame. Sorry, but don't be ashamed. You're listening to the Power Cat Questions podcast, and now Gills is going to take over. I think. Are you Gills? Uh huh. Your eyebrows just danced. That was you good. like that. Ooh. That was like the kid Ooh, at the the college graphic. baseball game where he sees the camera and he's making all the funny faces. Huh. That's what your face looks again. like. Yeah. The question. I, I absolutely love that when when the someone finds the camera <clears throat> and just stares into it and the cameraman realizes he's going in and zooms in on him like <laughs> past the hot chicks right into the guy like oh yeah I'm here <laughs> and he's here. Gills read now. Yes sir. So, First question of the second half from Pickles. Pickles. What is the over-under for how many more football players enter the portal before May 2nd? Oh. See, yeah, he's got it right. It's May 2nd. Like, he'll be in the portal by May 1 um, for our winter sport. I don't know. I think this football team's pretty set. I'd say half. Half a player. Half a p- – that's an over-under. Yes, sir. So if there's a push, we have a real mess on our hands. That is a very messy mess. <laughs> well, he tried to get into the portal, and then he changed and got cut in half. I'm going to take the over. I'll take the over of zero. Half. <laughs> yeah, it's over zero still. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it's zero, it's under. So who's it going to be then if you got one? Oh, man. I'm not gonna I, see, we're not, yeah, I'm not going to pick names, but I, I don't think it's a high number because – There's not that many guys to go into the portal. There's not that many guys to go in the portal, but also you got to think of injuries. If you're an injured guy or you've had surgery and K-State's the one that's been in care of you – I just I don't see how Plus, if you're injured, how are you how's anyone gonna pick you up? Right. Why would you leave that, your your standard of care there, and then trying to go as an injured player to a new university so they 
help rehab you. It's just it's kind of like you know in in pro sports where you have to pass a physical for the trade to go through. Yeah. Like Rodney Magruder was nearly traded to the Nuggets this year, but who was it? Bull Bull mm-hmm. or yeah, Bull Bull, 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 Bull failed his physical Did you with stutter? the Pistons. He stuttered. That is his name. It is B O L B O L. And so Rodney Rodney didn't go. <laughs> Rodney Rodney. I went to middle school. Did Bull, not go, Bull, Bull, go to. He did not go to Denver because of the failed physical on the other end. So it's kind of like you got to be able to be fit. And if K-State is so injured right now, I'm guessing that most of these players are smart enough to say, hey, I'm injured. I'm trying to rehab. I can't really transfer because my value right now is zero. Yeah, which is why I like the under. If I had to pick, it would be a backup offensive lineman who's finally come to the conclusion, I'm not breaking the lineup. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm out. Um, or uh, Chris Kleiman managed the quarterbacks pretty well. I mean, it, it helps that your number one guy that we all recognize as number one couldn't play. So the other three guys got a lot of reps and you flat out said, well, Will Howard's the number two right now. And the other two guys are tied. You didn't make a guy, your fourth quarterback. She did it again, by the way, your fourth quarterback, um, and told him, well, you probably want to transfer because you're fourth on the depth chart. You got two guys tied for third. So maybe one of those guys realizes, Coach is saying I'm tied for third, but I'm pretty sure I got beat out by the other guy, um, and they hit the portal. But, yeah, that's that's the only positions I can really imagine. If you're a receiver, you have great optimism about this offense under Colin Klein. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, if you're a running back, well, there's hardly anyone left, not named Deuce Vaughn. Um, you know, on the defensive side, everyone had opportunities to practice in the spring because of the injuries. It's the guy for, we might need to break. <laughs> As a church house yeah, creeper. The, the uh, Fitz's yeah, it's bad was not a comment on the offense. That was a comment on the smell that we were all smelling. <laughs> it's really bad. What's, she has a demon in her butt. You know what they say, silent but deadly. Oh, my God. Oh, so, I was going to say something, but yeah, I couldn't finish. Say it. His memory's been wiped clean. Yeah, it was like the men in black where they take yeah, a picture. And she, she, she took her magic Do they take butt. your picture or do they or just the, do a light? Know, the, the, it's like a, a light. Yeah. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. The backup long snapper just transferred. Well, but in all honesty, I think the kid's brilliant because he realized I want to play defensive end. Mm-hmm. And so he's not looking to go to Clemson. He just he wants to get in the transfer portal and go to maybe North Dakota State or probably not even that level, no. to be honest. Pitt State. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to take the over just because, hey, if the backup long snapper is going to transfer, then I could see like a walk on somewhere entering the transfer portal. That's what's great about the transfer portal. It sounds so romantic. You know what I mean? I'm in the transfer portal. You do realize before the transfer portal, if you transfer down a level, you could play. You could play. Yeah. It's the same rules, but now you get to say, I'm in the portal, and you end up at Missouri State. Unless there's a, a, a Brandon, uh, Brandon Jennings incident. That happens here in the next couple of weeks. I mean, we only have, what, 13 days as of right now. I'm going to take the under. I just don't know who it's going to be. Yeah. But uh, just because you don't know doesn't mean you can't say that eh, probably somebody. I think half is really – I think one and a half is a better number. We should get Wally on the phone. For an over, over under. Because <laughs> then you could take your under and still have one. Because I, I feel like there's going to be at least one. Probably right. two. How much are we betting? We are not wagering <laughs> any monetary, anything of monetary value. Wonder if Ghost State Kate wants to wager. He asks, has uh, the transfer portal sure. been good? <laughs> has the transfer portal been good for college sports and athletes? No. No, it hasn't. And I'm in favor of the transfer portal. Don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to I I'm all in favor of players having the ability to transfer and play. I just think I've said this before, and I know it's kind of nitpicky and maybe stupid. I think naming it the transfer portal was a big mistake. It sounds so cool. It sounds so cool. Um and it's not cool. It's not cool what's happened to a lot of these kids. These kids think they're leaving because a parent or a former coach or friends have told them they're better than their current situation. And in some cases, that's true. 
but most of them, a majority of them, end up transferring to a lesser institution, and maybe that's fine. Maybe that's what they want. Maybe if you've been a backup at Kansas State playing basketball, you want to transfer down and play. I'm all into that. I I mean, if I had stuck with basketball or something, I would have had to play D2 or something. I. You compete at the level at which you're comfortable and able to compete. But there's also a level of kids that find no place, that have been convinced they're good enough to be at a FBS school. Not maybe not in Power 5. And they get out in the real world and they realize, my only choice here is Duquesne. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that happened to a K-State player who would have played for K-State, would have played Big 12 football, got talked into getting into the transfer portal and ended up far away from home playing FCS football. Yeah, the transfer portal, I feel for the kids that have an opportunity to get a free education and squander that because someone convinces them to go into the portal because life is better on the other side of the portal and they find no scholarship on the other side. That's the problem with the portal. And here's the other thing. They might be 18, 19, 22 years old, but these these are legally adults. And this is a decision they're making. You know, I'm sorry. You made a poor choice, but we've all done that in life. I think the portal is really good for programs like K-State right now. I mean, when Bob Huggins came in, we talked about this in the first half of the podcast. When Huggs came in, you had to keep the roster together. You, you went out and you looked for a junior college player that might be available. There wasn't much available. I mean, when Bruce Weber came in, he somehow found D.J. Johnson, which is ironically one of the best recruits he signed. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of the top five. I'd put top I'd five. Ten. Really? Yeah. He's yeah. up there. He was a four-year player got, that started yeah. from almost day one. You got he Dean, left. Barry, and Kamal. And then who's next? Probably D.J. Yeah. At least Nigel. guys that stayed out Nigel. and stuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that. I mean, Marcus Foster was tremendous. I don't know what our guideline is. Well, as a re- recruit, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he was too. As obviously. an impact yeah. player for Kansas State basketball, I think one that's actually but a pretty. I'm yeah. just saying that's okay. how much things He's have changed. Roster. You didn't have these options. Yeah. Now, if you're at Missouri, you can just kick everyone out and go get a whole new roster in one year. It's incredible for that. And it does. Offer opportunities to players. You know, K-State just signed two guys that weren't finding much success or playing time at their institutions, even though they're highly regarded recruits. Maybe they were overrated, or maybe they just didn't have a proper opportunity. They didn't fit the system, and they'll flourish at K-State. That's what's great about the transfer portal. But so many kids get left behind. What's great for K-State is... They haven't lost. They don't lose in the transfer portal. If somebody goes to the transfer portal, they're not going to a program that's better than K-State. And they're taking talent from the transfer portal that are coming from places that are better than K-State. So I think that, you know, it it might be bad for the athlete. It might be bad for college sports as a whole. But I love the transfer portal because it's great for schools like K-State who can capitalize on, you know, their perceived shortcomings in recruiting. It's the sports, college sports version of a redistrib- redistribution of wealth. Yeah. Uh, and, and unfortunately, it's the schools like Detroit Mercy that lose their star player. You would think the coach would have a good end with keeping him on, but apparently not since his dad's the coach. But, I mean, they lose their best player. But it's, what a great opportunity for a kid like that to transfer up and go mm-hmm. see what he can do against the best. So, yeah, there is kind of that. But also, you find kids coming back down. If I recall, like one of the early players for Frank ended up at like Detroit and flourished. So, and he was nothing in K State. So, yeah. You, you, Michael Orris. No, Michael Orris. Is that Orris. right? No, that was, a, that was Bruce's other first mm-hmm. recruit. I think Nigel Pack is going to be the first K State player to land at a program that you could say, you know what? That's probably a better situation than K State. Right. Or at the very least, at least better than what K-State was with Nigel Pack. Let's look at Josh Youngblood. That guy was going to be a star at K-State for four years. And he went to Rutgers and just was there. Just a dude. Surprised yeah. he didn't transfer this year, honestly. I, He's got 12 days. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. So many of these kids have horrible advisors in their lives. And it might be a parent or an uncle or, you know, just some buddies. 
Now, there just doesn't seem to be anyone saying, dude, you need to stay pat, just hold your hand, and keep working. You're in a good spot. Everyone wants instantaneous grat- gratification, and that's not how it works. You got you to gotta grind. You got to earn it. Dejuan Gordon's my best example. Imagine if he just locked down and, and, be, and he was a team player, not only here at K-State, but at Mizzou. And now he wants to be a superstar at New Mexico State, I believe. Mm-hmm. Good for you. But I'd rather play in the Power Five. That's just me personally. Yeah, I'm not going to shame these kids because that's the one good thing about the portal is it gives them the power. You know, it's their life; they can do whatever they right. want. It's exactly. just if, if it was me, you they just don't understand, right? Their bra- their brains are are still developing. I feel like, and they don't understand what's in their best interest moving forward. Well, in fairness to him, he was the Chicago Player of the Year according to the Sun Times. Uh, apparently, they were drinking that day when they made the choices. <laughs> Um, but where it was just a down year, he was playing interior in you know in what's predominantly a garden guard laden high school league where everyone just wants to score a bunch of points. So maybe he looked really good. It had to have been a really down year. But the second I saw him at an open practice when the media went, I'm like this guy can't shoot the ball. And hold on, he doesn't have a left hand. He can't dribble. You talking about Selton Miguel? Well, Selton Sorry. Miguel was who he was. He's not really good with his hands. He doesn't have a post move that he can commit to memory. He he is a certified. What's he talking about? What is this? What is this rant? Stephen Cole. A. Smith. Uh-oh. He doesn't have a post move that he can commit to memory. He's got small hands. He doesn't really move. He, does, he can't shoot. Does not do he, he doesn't have a post move. He I'd, is I'd a certified. That is a blasphemy, Stephen A. impersonation. <laughs> I, he I, is I'd, a certified scrub. I'd rather have Trump than Stephen A. on this podcast. And- <laughs> Both of them don't really work. Um, I've never heard that. Blasphemous. Blasphemous. Stephen A. is going to be on a podcast here very soon when the overtime returns in early May (laughs) because he is absolute gold. And now that they're really enforcing uh, copyright, we have to get rid of all the music. So no more drops of Rick Ross. We could probably pull off a grunt. We pull off that, but yeah. not music. Yeah, right. Aww, sad day. Somebody will know the rant that I'm talking about in the comments, and if you want to post the video, you'll make my day. Okay, let's move on. All right, from Topeka style sushi. Mm. We all know how such good sushi that is. <laughs> it's like carp, like uncooked carp uh, with some brown lettuce. That's so good. It comes straight from the the, the Missouri River, I, I believe. I don't think that's the, into No, I don't think that runs through. It comes from yeah, Wanamaker. It's imported from Missouri. <laughs> the Wanamaker River. <laughs> Look, there's no Wanamaker River, but they just found a bunch of dead fish along Wanamaker. Lake Shawnee. Fitz, regarding the Premier League slash Super Conference, ESPN is plotting. Who is to say places like Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, and other Big, and other big Ten schools have any interest in playing semi-pro ball? Uh, it's, it's a valid point. And, uh, you know, I, I think... ESPN is just assuming that the Super Conference will be the Big Ten and SEC as they currently exist. And I don't think if you're some of these schools, you want anything to do with that. No, Vanderbilt doesn't care. Vanderbilt doesn't have any dignity. Vanderbilt knows what they are. They're they're the easy win in football and basketball, typically. Once in a while, they get good. They're just good in baseball. That's their sport. Um, but if you're the... If you're Vanderbilt, it's, it's a good example. And the NCAA plays hardball. Oh, you want to break off and start your own football thing? Well, you're not coming back to us with your other sports. If you're Vanderbilt and you no longer can go for the College World Series title, you might have to stop and think about things. If you're Oregon and they tell you, well, you you can run your own track and field in the Super Conference, but you're not going to have an NCAA title, you might stop and think about things. It is going to be a big decision, but at the end of the day, everyone's greedy. Everyone is greedy. And a life with $100 million a year in media rights is better than $60 million a year. No, it's not. It doesn't. It, probably not. You want to know why? Because when you get into the super conference, every coaching salary will be hyperinflated. And that's what's going to suck for the Kansas states of the world if they're excluded from the super conference and they want to be in because then what happened with Scotty Hazleton will happen over and over and over Mm -hmm. second. Someone has success. There's going to be so much money thrown at them that there's no way K state can responsibly match it. And I'll I'll just see how it all plays out. I don't think this is going to work. First start with keeping an eye on the big 10 meteorites. If they have the balls to exclude ESPN 
and I think they might be looking at it, that's a game changer. That's a middle finger to ESPN saying, you're no longer the power broker you think you are. Because we just, we've got Fox owns most of our rights, and we just brought on a game of the week in CBS, and we have Apple Plus or, or Amazon Prime, you know? I well, mean, who, who voted against playoff expansion? It was the Big Ten, Pac-12, and ACC, right? Yeah. That's the middle finger to ESPN. And I think it's what, you know, I know on our boards people talk about, oh, we hate ESPN, we're anti-ESPN. I am. But – you're also pro. You're also pro playoff expansion. You can't be both right now. You True. are either you are one or the other. And if if you want ESPN to die, or at least for their share and their influence to go away, you need the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and the ACC to stand up against playoff expansion. Okay, let's clarify what he just said. The contract ESPN currently has says if they if there's an effort to expand the playoff, they own the rights for mm-hmm. an extended period. And so eventually, uh, essentially those conferences voted against giving ESPN prolonged rights to an expanded playoff so that when when 25 I think it was a 10-year deal. So whatever the 10-year yeah. initial deal and whenever the expanded playoff happens, I believe it would extend and basically reset the deal to another 10 years. My, my thought was that um, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. And, and we know that ESPN is operating behind the scenes constantly. We've seen what they do there. I mean, the fact that the SEC voted for playoff expansion says everything you need right. to know about ESPN. And and I'm all for it, but I don't want ESPN to have it forever. And I think those conferences said, well, Fox and CBS and Amazon and all these entities have talked to us about this. They want a shot at it at 25. And you know what's what happens when you have multiple entities bidding? Yeah. You make more money. You make more money. So... While I was upset by it, I get why they did it, and um, yeah, I'm all for it. I'm, all, I'm I'm for anything that dilutes ESPN's pull because ESPN isn't looking out for the fan. They're not looking out for college athletics. They're not looking out for anything other than ESPN's interests, which is, at the end of the day, their own business, and I get that. And Disney shareholders. Right. But they are essentially going to salt the earth of college athletics. Yeah. Um, Unintentionally and ruin it for everyone. What happens when Bali Sports comes and tries to take over playoff expansion? Did you say just say Bali? Is that what I said? Bali. 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 It should be Bali, though. You look at it, it's spelled ball with a Y. Yeah, balls. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> they, they, you, I think a basic, basic idea in broadcasting is people can see the game. Yes. They haven't mastered that. I would agree. I looked at getting their app. Which isn't even available. They said it would be available, but it's not even available. It's like a billion dollars a month, right? Yeah, it's like 18 bucks yeah. a month. So stupid. To watch the Royal... Eight, what? Now, if you break it down with every game, it's not that much, but... Hey, a dollar a game. I'm a Royals fan. I'm. I There's not enough alcohol in the world I can watch every game. <laughs> That's just a miserable existence sitting around watching the Royals every night. A little bit back to the question, and this kind of goes back to my rant from last week. You know, why would Vanderbilt or Mississippi State or other Big Ten schools, you know, have any interest in playing in semi-pro ball? I don't think ESPN has any interest in a lot of those schools being in a super conference. You think Purdue is going to be in there? The the only reason they want you is to sorry, King Jim, (laughs) is to be the bitch, to to be the one that gets knocked around and beaten up and. But they nobody's just, they just want you for that. the L's. Nobody's gonna be the L's. Nebraska is gonna be the school that takes the L's. Oh, they do anyway. Auburn probably is the school that becomes the school that takes the L's. Nebraska is the poster child for what could happen if you join a super conference. Someone has to lose the conference games. And particularly if it's separate from the NCAA and they're not playing the Kansas States or North Texas or whomever in the non-conference. They have to play all their games in their super conference. The end of the year, the overall record will be 500. As many losses will be handed out as wins. It's the simple truth of sports, and someone's going to be on the losing side. And there's going to be a lot of programs used to winning that are now 6-6. Six and six. They'll be a mess. But, Zach, if you dismantle the SEC, how do you not 
include all of the SEC. You can't just leave out Vanderbilt. Isn't that a lawsuit waiting to happen? I would think so. I think I, I think excluding anyone without offering them an opportunity to join by meeting criteria is asking for lawsuits. I'm sorry, but when ESPN tries dismantling the Big 12 like they did last summer, anything is on the table for yeah. them. Yeah, they're, they're Anything shameless. is on the table. Shameless. And they're still working on it. Why, why, why does ESPN want Ole Miss and Mississippi State in a super conference? Dude, they don't. They, they want maybe one of them. They want, they want them to take the L's. And, they, and they're great fans. Everyone in the SEC outside of Vanderbilt has great fans. I mean, Vanderbilt's just a, a total misfit for that league. But it's traditional. It's been in the league forever. South Carolina and Kentucky. Why would ESPN want them? Well, the, if you're Kentucky and you're excluded from the NCAA tournament, you probably don't want to be part of it. Right. It's going to be get it's going to get interesting, but it all comes down to this. Who's going to stand up to ESPN? They are absolute bullies. They will flat out tell you, "Well, we'll never we'll never rank you in anything and we'll never talk about you." And and that's just it it, it, that company is so corrupted by greed, it's unbelievable. From all three putt, have you heard how the the two new NIL groups started by former players are doing? No, not really. I mean, one of them is mostly aimed at walk-ons. You know, they did the, they had the three guys that got essentially their tuition paid by the NIL. Very cool. That's awesome. That's a huge advantage, guys. There's three scholarships, three guys now that probably could have earned a scholarship and maybe still will, but it takes the pressure off K-State from, hey, you got to give me a scholarship or I'm leaving. I mean, I need to get some, I need need my school paid for. And I all just took care of that. That's incredible. Now, I think BYU fell under pretty big spotlight of scrutiny when a company said, we're going to pay everyone's, every walk-on's tuition and BYU promoted it. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is kind of... Stepping over the boundaries of the NIL. The other one's going to be aimed at the one that uh, Curry Sexton and Aaron Lockett are, are heading. Um, there's many, many people involved, with it, but those, those are the main guys. Um, it's going to be aimed at existing players. Okay, so Deuce Vaughn and you know, Aoki Lee, the, those type of players. What have you earned? You're going to earn this. If you're good, you get this. And I like that too. I'm just going to say this. And I really don't have any lockdown evidence of this, but there's a third something out there that I think is talking to recruits. And that's the gray area of the NIL that is scary for athletic departments. I mean, you can't have boosters interacting with recruits to lure them to your school with money, even in the world of the NIL. It has to be more vague than that. So that really gets... I. I think there's someone out there operating kind of independently of the other two INILs, and and that that could have a tremendous impact for K State if there's a way to do it where a kid knows if I end up at K State I'm going to get this money. Let's be honest, that's what the SEC's been doing for years. Yeah. Now everyone can just do it. But if you're the NCAA, you're probably going to hammer Kansas State while Alabama is just handing out suitcases full of money to Texas A and M. Right, all A and M's out of control. But, yeah, so that's the other side of this is that the, the schools that are really pissed off about it, this, about the NIL, are the ones that have been doing it and have had a huge advantage. They don't want other people to have access to the gold mine that they've been stealing from. <clears throat> Can't. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> from not Fitz's burner. It's not my burner. With the greatest picture hey, in the world. Hey, there's a picture head. on there that's not convincing, Fitz. It's <laughs> just you and a hat and a mustache. I don't know what to say. You're pretty good with Photoshop, aren't you? Man, that He is pretty good with Photoshop. Uh, that's a very fancy mustache. I want to meet Pretty not convincing. Fitz's Raleigh burner. Finger's mustache right there. It, was. it looks like a 1970s relief pitcher. You, you know Chuck E. Cheese? Well, you didn't have kids, so you've probably never been in a Chuck E. Cheese. Not, not as far as he knows, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I've been in Chuck E. Cheese a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like the uh, the one guy with the mustache and it would move. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Yep. That's <laughs> hopefully somebody else got that reference. Is that Chucky? No, not Chucky. It's like the Italian pizza maker guy. He's like the chef, right? It's not Chucky. Isn't what? Chucky a bear? Chucky's a mouse. Oh oh he's God. a rat. He's a rat. That's that's perfect for a food place. <laughs> perfect. Good. Good. He's marketing. a pizza rat. You can't sneak a piece of cheese by a hungry rat. 
It's true. Rex Hedler, folks. <laughs> With the new Big 12 Conference around the corner, does this year's football season have, have any added importance for the remaining eight schools to try and establish themselves as a or the top team? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I, I would feel like anyway, when you have an influx of something new, um, you have new teams coming in. Yeah, when Texas and Oklahoma say, see you later, um, there's going to be somebody who's going to be favored to be at the top of the conference and it's going to be somebody from the existing big 12. So having that winning culture and establishing that winning culture, it's extremely important. And especially with the year after that, because the year after that is Texas and Oklahoma's last year. We don't know for sure. We're thinking. Who knows? Uh, technically it should be 24, but I don't think it will be either way. I mean, we're going to have one or two years of an expanded 14 team Big 12, which is a mess. Yeah. I, I, I had someone tell me, well, the Big 12 is looking at going to 14 permanently. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, no. That is the worst number to be at. Quit. No conference should be 14. It's just a, nope. your, your two conferences of seven. Look what happened to the SEC. They don't play each other anymore. It's just a mess. But that's also them just being dumb. You know what? Yeah. Well, well, they play one last game. Yeah, they also play one. They also I'll also add, game. though, guys, like, let's just be honest. This is going to be a completely different Oklahoma team. Texas won five games last year. And but they're, they're, according to they, ESPN, they're, they're back. They're, yeah. they're, they're a good back. team. They almost beat Kansas. They almost beat Kansas. The whole point of this is it's the conference is still wide open. It really is. And when those two teams leave, it's just going to make it even more wild. I think it's important for someone to establish themselves you know, over the next two years before – Cincinnati comes in because I think Cincinnati's the one team, at least right now, as it appears to be the one that can claim the throne immediately. And I don't think that that's necessarily good for the conference. I don't know that, Uh, especially from the perception, just, you know, here's Cincinnati, this outsider, and they come into the big 12. Oh, look, they've won. Well, the big 12 wasn't that good. That's That's what everybody's going to say. But if you get a school that comes in immediately and is in the playoff, that's great for the big 12. No, here's the, that's here, also true. Getting back to the question from not my burner, um, I think next year is really important because it'll be the last year of the ten. Okay, so if if in twenty two we have two schools not Oklahoma and Texas like we did in twenty one that are in the title game, that sets an interesting trend, and then they're around for at least twenty three, maybe twenty four, with the other four new teams. And they start losing to those teams? I think it's going to show that the Big 12 is just fine, even though it doesn't have the big fan bases of a Texas. That's all that. And I I completely understand that importance of that demographic of having a huge national following. But ESPN can try to prop up Texas all they want year after year after year. And this year was just shameless what they did. Don't tell me it's some computer ranking. Someone put in the... Put in the uh, all the coding, all, all the – what am I trying to say? Give me a word. Formula. The formula to algorithm. decide. The algorithm. algorithm. There we go. That's the word. It was too many, too many <laughs> syllables. It's That's way why I'm here. Uh, algorithm. Um, and, yeah, they just basically tailored it for a program like Texas to look good. They won five freaking games last year <laughs> and had to have K-State play in a miserable game to get the fifth win. They lost to Kansas. What what computer formula has them ranked sixth in the country? It's just so blatant what ESPN's trying to do. It's sickening. It's not even doing journalism anymore. It's not it's not even being responsible in how they cover college sports. It's gross. Yeah, I hope the new programs come in in a year and kick their asses up and down the field. We'll see how it all plays out. But this year is important. I hope it's Kansas State and who else? Uh, Iowa State. I don't want Iowa State. Baylor. KU. I don't want Baylor. <clears throat> Oklahoma State. TCU. TCU in the title. There you game. go. Finally. All purple. What's it say if for two years in a row it's not Oklahoma and Texas? When you try to frame this as they're the only good teams in the conference. It means the quote unquote the Big 12 is down. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's how it'll be played. Oh, good. Well, then take them. They're down. Have them. <laughs> Have them, and then we'll see if they win. If Oklahoma goes in the SEC after not making the the Big 12 title game two years in a row, three years in a row, I'd be pretty 
comical if they made it in the SEC. Texas is going to get trashed in the SEC. Absolutely trashed. Texas, you absolutely opened up your entire state to the SEC now. I know A&M did that to a degree, but you just threw the doors wide open. Good job, boneheads. Take your money. You never have enough money, do you, Texas? Oh, take the money and run. Thank you, Steve Miller. Last question from KSU number one. Should we be concerned Kirk Schultz is getting this much interest for a Big 12 commissioner? Here's why you should be concerned. Fitz, take it away. Well, here's why you should be concerned. Because it indicates a void of leadership that other people know that it's going to be a really tough job. I mean, this new media rights contract is going to be tough. I think it's a sign of that more than anything. Kirk Schultz has been very active in athletic leadership. But I don't want a guy who made it a priority to get rid of EMAW in any – if that's what your priorities are, I don't want you around. I just don't you, – you get lost in minutia as a conference commissioner – and it's disastrous for all your members. I just I can't see someone who was so bothered by something so trivial right. as that coming into a conference that has BYU in it. Right. What how how can you how can you operate if that's your mindset? I just Kirk Schultz must have a great agent that is putting his name out there for this job. That's the only thing I can think of as to why he's being considered as a candidate. It is insane to me. He is as dynamic as a package of crackers. (laughs) He is the Melba toast of university presidents. Now, they're trying to spin him that he's really dynamic in meetings and he's forceful and okay, whatever. Maybe that's a statement about the bland leadership of the common university president more than his outstanding nature. I, they need to get someone totally – I like what the Pac-12 did. I don't know if George whatever – what's his name? Kleinkoff? Klein, Something. I don't know if he'll end up being good, but I appreciate what they attempted to do. Someone yeah. that is from outside but has observed everything going on and has an understanding of the sports environment. I don't know. I don't have no idea who that is, but I don't want a president. I don't really want an AD. I would like someone from the television side, to be real honest. John Skipper. Hmm. Wow. Not a bad idea. Then all the games are on. What is it? What's, how do you pronounce that? D-A-Z-N? DAZONE. DAZONE. That's right. I can never remember it. DAZONE. All the games are on DAZONE, which nobody does have. Hey, but streaming is streaming. If you're paying five bucks a month for it. But the, the thing I'll give to Zone, if you don't know what that is, it, it sounds like the name of a uh, pepperoni pizza calzone or something. Like they that. do a lot of pay per view boxing and fights, and, and they that, had, that was they filled the void after Showtime and HBO kind of stuff. Right, doing and fights. they were doing a lot of soccer, but they lost a lot of that. The, the, that was their basically they're looking at an overseas audience as of now. I think they do a lot of baseball in in the uh, Asia. I'm not totally certain what rights they have, but I, I just know DAZN was kind it, of a, a it, fight place. It's a huge platform, just not for the sports we typically watch yeah. or talk about. You know, yeah, that's that's the kind of outside the box thinking. I have a person I would love to be a candidate. He would never be a candidate, and I can't even mention it on this podcast. I'll just say that because he works for some competition. It's not Oliver Luck. It will be Oliver Luck. Let's be honest okay. here. <laughs> because God knows the one thing the Big 12 is going to need on the next meteorites is a whole lot of Oliver. No, oh, Luck. Luck. <laughs> you that's, did your best. That's right. That's right. Is that it? Mm-hmm. That was it? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. This was so long. This was so – This I apologize. Where are we going after this? So long? <sighs> we can't talk about that. Uh, Next week we will. We're gonna go. We're just gonna go. We to the already fridge. mentioned the other place. We're just gonna go to the fridge and hang out <laughs> and just drink at the fridge. We can't do that either. Damn it! So many rules. We'll be back next week. Next week we're gonna have an early podcast, this version, and a special recruiting podcast with our own Ryan Wallace and Kevin Flaherty from Twenty Four Seven Sports, as we discuss this incredible year of football recruiting in the state of Kansas. That'll be next week on the PowerCat Podcast before I leave for Vegas to do some serious work and also swim in the Bellagio Fountains. 
Thank you for listening to the Power Cat Podcast. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked. Temperature set. Lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.